Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. It's good to see you all here. Uh, some of you may be first time in church in a while because, you know, when I was a kid, I remember like what grandma always wanted for Christmas was for the, the grandkids to come to church. So some of you got drug here probably by grandma. You know, you're like, Grammy, what do you want for Christmas? Um, I want you to go to church with me. Is there anything else that, that you want for Christmas? It's great to have you. Um, I have a short message, and then we're going to sing a little bit more, and we're going to worship a little bit more. If you brought a Bible, if you didn't, you can find it on your phone. Luke chapter 2, verse 4. We've been in a series called Jesus, Joy to Our World, and today I want to talk to you about the joy of being rescued. We've been in our church, we've had uh, the joy of being loved, the joy of being accepted, and we're going into, and the joy of being forgiven, and the joy of being rescued. And so I, it, literally, this will be a short message, so if you're bored in church, I don't think you're going to have time to be bored. Luke chapter 2, verse 4. Father, thank you for your word. God, thank you for the truth of Scripture, and I pray today that, Lord, even as I pray today, that you would just comfort people that need comfort, that you would help families, that God, you would... You would encourage our hearts today for what you did through your son, Jesus, in your name. Amen. amen. Luke 2, 4. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth and Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house of the line of David, which that's really important because the Bible says that this, the Messiah would be born from the line of David. And if you read other scripture, they literally go through the whole entire lineage of, of where Jesus came from. So it's really important for accuracy. And he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping uh, watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you that you'll find the baby wrapped in clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with an, with the, with an angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on peace to men on whom his favor rests. I want to read you that little verse that we, we, we use it all the time in the Christmas story and, uh, and everybody's comfortable with a little baby uh, in, in the manger, but we miss so much. We miss so much about this verse. I wanna read it to you again, verse 10. Do not be afraid. And I say this to our church all the time. Angels appear all the time in scripture and scare everybody because they just appear. You know what I mean? Like, give me some warning, you're coming. You're, I've, I've stood in the field where those shepherds were met by those angels in Israel. I've stood in that field and thought, man, wouldn't that be crazy? Just you're minding your own business and just an angel appears in the sky and starts declaring to you who's a nobody. Shepherds were outcasts. And then an angel choir comes and sings this song. And I want you to hear what they said. Don't be afraid. There's four things. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. I bring you, watch this. I bring you good news of great joy. And a lot of us, and I've been saying this this whole month, a lot of us sing joy to the world, the Lord is coming. We don't think about it as being for us. We don't think about joy to me. We think about, well, yeah, joy to the world, man. Yeah, God loves the world, but does he really like me? Does he love me? And what Jesus did when he was born, and, and I don't want to leave today, I don't want us to leave today with the baby just staying in the manger. Because that's where it's comfortable for us that Jesus would stay in the manger. We go, oh, how cute, how sweet. Let's go open presents and eat. I want the man to grow up. I want you to see what he did, what the angel proclaimed. He says, don't be afraid, which a lot of people are afraid. I'm bringing you good news and it's great joy. Because today for you, a savior has been born. Why would we need a savior? Why didn't God send a philosopher or, or an activist? Why didn't he send like a religious preacher just to come and preach about God? Why did God say, you need a savior because you need to be rescued from something? I was at CVS, and this is no, I'm not slamming CVS, but I was at CVS uh, two nights ago. And I, you know how when you, get, when you get a prescription field and they're not ready for you and they go, go wait, 
Go run around in our store for 30 minutes. I think it's a ploy. I think they're, that's how they sell you junk, right? It's like, go walk around. So I'm walking around by myself in CVS wasting time. And I said, oh, I think I need shampoo because I'm out of my shampoo because I get a special shampoo from Squatch. Anybody ever heard of Squatch? Yeah, it's not good stuff. It's terrible. <laughs> but, I, but I was, but it's all natural. So I was standing there looking at all these shampoos. And I haven't done this for a long time. I haven't looked at shampoo for so long. And I'm standing in front of the shampoo aisle. It's, it's, it's not just an aisle, it's two aisles. And I'm standing there and I'm looking at all the shampoo and I go, we got aloe, peaches, we got, we got ground beef, we got oyster juice. <laughs> We got all these incredible things. And I mean, I'm going through the list. I'm actually writing some of it down. And I, was, I told my wife ago, I didn't know there were so many shampoos. There are shampoos for curly hair, for colored curly hair, for colored hair, for straight hair, for wispy hair. And look at my hair. It doesn't matter what I use. I just want to make sure that when I'm done, I can do that squeaky thing. You know, when you're done, you go, squeak, squeak, squeak. It's good. I'm clean. And I'm standing there just for 10 minutes thinking about what I'm going to buy. And I'm reading. This one here has argan oil. Do we need argan oil on our hair? This one here has, this is peaches. This one has avocado. I'm not eating. I want to, I want to wash my hair. And this little gal from the store comes around. I see her swinging around the aisle. She works there. And, and she can tell that I've been there for 15 minutes. And, and I could tell she wanted to rescue me, but she didn't. And so guess what I left with? No shampoo. Because I had no one to help me. Now that's a, and, and, and that's a dumb thing about being, I felt like I needed rescue. I almost FaceTimed my wife and said, what do I use? What kind of shampoo do I use? There are real things in life that people get rescued from. The guy that's on the ocean for 100 days, you know that you hear these stories on 100 days, he's on a little raft, his boat crash, and it's 100 days. How many of you would just die? I would be out there going, just, I'm going to jump over and let a shark just eat me right now. <laughs> Navy SEALs rescue people. It's, it's amazing. I'm remembering that, I think it was in the 80s or the early 90s, uh, 90s when, what was her name? Jessica Lynch, I think, when she was captured by terrorists and, and she was held and she was sick and she was broken and the Navy SEALs came and got her. That is, how many guys just like the Navy SEALs? Come on. I mean, guys, we all want to be one, right? Just coming through the door, just poof, and you got your little light on your gun, and they come and they rescue this girl, and they, they grab a stretcher. I remember seeing the video, and they're running with this girl out of this hospital that she was being literally held in, and they got on a helicopter, and I was like, man, that is amazing. And I want you to hear the simple truth, that when Jesus came and died, first he was born, then he was crucified, then he was buried, then he rose again. And the reason and the purpose for why he did that was not so that we could have Christmas, although I enjoy Christmas. I like to eat, I like giving gifts and receiving gifts. He didn't come even so that we could have Christian radio and Christian music. I mean, it's part of the deal. But he came because there was a group of people that needed rescuing that had no ability to, re to rescue themselves. That girl that was hurt from the, I've watched the interview with her. She had a hurt back or a broken leg or something. She had no ability to overcome the people that were holding her and get out of there. They, someone had to come and literally rescue her from trouble. And that's what Jesus came to do. And there may be people in this room, maybe you don't know Christ and you're like, well, what, what do I need rescuing from? What, what, what do I need to be rescued from? Why did God send a baby to come in the flesh to die for us, what was the purpose? I'm gonna show you a verse, Colossians chapter one, verse 13. For he, talking about Jesus, has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He rescued us. Now, some of you might, it might read different. It might, might read he delivered us. Well, what, what does the word rescue mean? In the Greek, because you know the Bible was written in Greek. How many of you know the Bible was written in Greek? It wasn't written in English. That word, delivered, means to be rescued from danger. To be rescued and free from danger. So listen what God said about his son. He goes, the reason why he came is because you needed to be rescued from danger. Well, what danger? 
What, what, and this is how I, when I read my Bible, I go, what, what did I need to be rescued from? Why did God send his son? The first thing is the danger of spending eternity apart from God. That's a big deal. By the way, look up here. Some of you might not believe in God or, or just you're here because grandma drug you. The reality is that God is holy, perfect. Adam and Eve blew it. We always have to go back to Adam and Eve because that's where the sins came from. Adam and Eve, 100% blew it. I wish we could go back and help her and be like, and him, and be like, don't do this. Because if you do this, we're going to have a tax code that thick in our country. <laughs> Please don't do this. Do you imagine just no January 1st tax time? Praise the Lord for that, because it's coming. How many know, amen, it's coming. And all of us are starting to get worried. She gave in to the devil who tempted her and said, God's lying to you. If you eat of this tree, you're gonna be like him. And he's just jealous because he knows if you eat this tree, you're gonna be like him. And she goes, oh, well, hey, looks good. Let's, let's eat. And gave it to, to Adam who was there. Because we, we, think, we think that Eve ate the fruit and then she like went back to Adam who was sleeping and gave him a piece of fruit and he didn't know it. The Bible says that Adam was there. What a dummy. What was he doing? He was doing the typical guy thing, man. He was looking at something shiny like, oh, what's over there? <laughs> and the devil's tempting this, his wife and telling him lies. And he's like, because listen, Adam was the one that God said, don't do this. And then he made Eve. And then Adam had to tell Eve, don't do this. And so he's standing there not protected. And man, all hell literally breaks loose and mankind comes over what the Bible calls the curse of the law of sin. The curse of sin is on every human being. So what we needed rescued from is a, the possibility of being separated from God for all eternity. This is, this is why Jesus came. This is why he came, because every human being on the planet is under the curse of sin. And when Jesus came and died on the cross, his blood was shed so we could be forgiven, so we could have eternal life again. And so that when we're dead and everyone will die, there's children here, so I do not want to go hardcore, but everyone's going to pass away. And the question is, have you been rescued? Have you allowed Jesus and what he did on the cross to rescue you? from the fate of being separated from God for all eternity. And I know we don't want to talk about hell because it's Christmas, but it's a real place. That was the danger. One of the dangers that we were in is that we would be separated from God because judgment was hanging over our head because we had all sinned. And judgment was literally hanging over our heads. We couldn't rescue ourselves from the penalty of sin. That's the other thing. We couldn't do it. By the way, if we could have rescued ourselves from the penalty of sin, God would have never sent Jesus to die for us. Never. He would have never had his son come and be massacred on a cross, but he knew that was the only way. The only way for us to get out of the penalty from under the weight of the penalty of sin is to receive what the Bible calls the free gift of eternal life through his son, Jesus. That's how we get out. And if you're a believer, this should make Christmas a lot, a lot better for you. Like, man, this is amazing. I've been set free from eternity, from uh, being separated from God, and the penalty of sin has been removed from me through Jesus. There, there should be people smiling in here right now. Go ahead, smile at your neighbor. Like literally just stop being so conservative for one second and just look at your neighbor and go, that's amazing. Say that to him. That's amazing. That girl who was rescued from, from those, the terrorists that held her, she was literally helpless, had no way to overcome them, none. And here comes the SEAL teams. I love these guys. I, I, uh, I just, I so, I, if, I'm gonna just be honest with you. If I was tough enough and I wasn't a delicate flower, I would love to be a Navy SEAL. But I'm not, I went in the Navy and you know, they're a different breed. Those guys are a different breed. I'd be ringing that bell the moment they started yelling at me. Like, why are you yelling at me? Ding, 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 I'm out of here. <laughs> here they came. Could you just be, you're hopeless. You're in this place and you're hurt and broken. And here they come. They just come crashing in. 
Could you imagine the joy that would overwhelm you? Like, if I was coming to rescue you, you might not be joyful. <laughs> You'd probably be like, how'd you find me? And now we're both going to die. <laughs> but the seals are there. Man, when you saw that guy with the, you know, the big leg just kicking the door down and he comes up with a little helmet, a little light on his helmet and he's coming and he's got the little laser light. You're thinking, I'm rescued. You're not going like this. Hey, go away. No, I'm good. I got it. I'm good. My back's almost healed. I'll be able to sneak out of here. You guys just go back to the helicopter. Are you kidding me? She was like, she jumped on that thing and said, get me out of here. But yet God sent his son to save us and rescue us. And there are literal people who hold out. There are people, even in this room right now, you think, I don't need that. I don't need the Lord. I don't need that. Listen, you are broken. And when those angels said, there's good news, it's great joy for you because today a savior is born. Watch this, to you, for everyone, every race. There's no racism in the kingdom of God. God doesn't see color. He sees his son and his son came and died for us. Man, he rescued you out of that place. That should make you so, so happy. Amen? All right. Here's the other thing we needed rescue from. So eternity without God the penalty of our sin, and I'm just gonna say it straight up, darkness. Because what does that scripture say? I wanna show you the scripture. It says this, we, he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness. And if some of you in your Bibles, it doesn't say, it doesn't say the word rescues, it says that he translated us, he delivered us, and that he's translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Well, what does that mean? That he's moved us to the son of his love. Here's where the word comes from. And I, and I, want, I want to break it down so you, you really hear this in, in a great way. He brought us in. He translated us. This is what it means. Back in that day, that word translate describes the deportation of a population from one country to another or one class of people to another. And in this biblical day, when they said the word translate, everyone, oh, I know what that means because here's what it meant. They would take low class people and they would transport them and translate them out of their country and put them in their own little places. And here's what God did. He took the weak and the weary and translated us into a better kingdom instead of trying to get rid of us. He came and translated, we've been translated, watch this, our address has literally been changed. Before Jesus, my address in the spirit was Rick Fry, he lives at 666 Way, he's under the dominion of darkness. He's under sin. His house address is 666, and you know, everybody does the, you know, the 666, you know, all that stuff. Watch this, hell is, where, is what my address was. And when I received Christ, watch what Jesus did. The Bible says when we receive him, not when we earn it, not when we try to figure it out, but when we receive him, we are translated out of, our address gets changed. We are moved from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. I don't know about you, but I don't wanna live in darkness. I don't want to live there. I remember before I knew Jesus, when I played in the rock bands that I played in, I remember thinking hell was literally a, like um, a kegger. Because that's what we were all told by all the bands that back in the 80s, you know, it was like, yeah, man, we're all going to go to hell and we're going to party and, you know, the bands are going to be playing and there's going to be keggers and we're like, yeah. And then I read the Bible and got saved and I was like, that's not true. <laughs> the, the kingdom of darkness isn't like... Hell is not a place where it's like the devil's in charge. You know, you're going to show up and the devil's going to be standing there going, hey, what's your name? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're in. The devil's actually hell's chief victim. He doesn't run anything. And so we've been moved when we receive Jesus. We've been rescued, man. We've been rescued out of darkness and brought into the kingdom of, the Bible says, the son, the father, right? The son of his love. And we have redemption and we've been forgiven of, of all our sin. We don't have any way to get out of that place except for through Jesus Christ. No other religion, no other name. There's no way for you to have strength to get out. Yesterday, I was, um, I was talking to a friend of ours who's kind of like a life coach. She, she, she's our nutritionist and 
She's always calling me, hey, how's your stress level? You know, one of those people, you, you know these people? And they're just like, you know, and she's always telling me what vitamins to take and what to do. And she said yesterday, she goes, you know what you need to do? Go for a walk. And if you, if you really think about it, run a little bit. So I went for a walk and I started running. And when you haven't run for five, six, seven years, I started to run and my body literally, I could hear my body go, what's wrong? What are we running from? Is there a pit bull chasing us? Do I need to get some adrenaline flowing? And man, I realized in that moment that I had no ability. I had no ability to just like run, run away from anything. If there was a pit bull behind me, dead. I would be gone. I had no ability, and look what God did. We have no ability in ourselves to save ourselves. God gave his son, that baby, that grew up to be a man, that grew up to be crucified and buried, and the Bible says is now raised again, sitting at the right hand of the Father. And this is what he's saying to every person in this room today. Don't be afraid. I'm bringing you good news today. Should be great joy for your heart. I'm the savior that was born to you to bring you out of darkness into the kingdom of my light where I have forgiven you. I want to I read to you a verse in Matthew 1, 21. It says this, and she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. He will rescue you from your sins. That verse that we read in Ephesians 1, 14 says this, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Redemption and the forgiveness of sins. How many of you have ever been into like recycling? We're in California. Everybody's into recycling. Oh, the blue can. I'm going to confess sin to you. The blue can for me is just another trash can. I just, I just want to, I want to confess it to you. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I know I'm going to get an email. Like I'm not a good person, but I literally just open up whatever cans near me and I chuck in whatever's in there. And I can always see the trash guy when he dumps it. It's like, you know, he's all mad at me because there's a couch in there. Redemption, you take a, a, a Coke can and you smash it into nothing and you squash it down and it, it has no more, no more use. It's over. You're not putting anything back in it again. What do they do? They take that aluminum, they take it into a plant and I don't know what they do, so don't email me. And they create another can. They watch, they recycle it, they redeem it. And sin has literally smashed us. And some of us don't function well. We have issues, we have marital problems, we have issues going on in our life. And Jesus comes, watch what he does. He doesn't just forgive you of your sin. He actually has the ability to redeem you so that you become usable again and that you become the whole person that God's intended you to be in his son. That's being delivered, amen? All right, we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray in just a minute and I'm gonna have the worship team come on out. Now when you go home, you can talk about Jesus in a bigger context than just being there in a manger doing nothing. He did amazing things for us. I want you to close your eyes, would you please, and bow your heads. I just want you to take this moment to think about and ask yourself a couple questions. Just, just ask yourself this question in your mind. Have you been rescued? How do you know if you've been rescued? And then I'm gonna answer those for you real quick. You'll know you've been rescued when you call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says that he will save you when you call upon his name. His grace, his mercy, and his kindness was poured out on the cross so that you could be forgiven. And all he's waiting for is for you to say, yes, I receive what you did for me 2,000 years ago. Come and forgive me, redeem me. He's at, he actually loves you. It's, he's not just trying to build up his brand. He actually loves you and gave himself for you. And then ask yourself this question, am I saved? Have I received the Savior that God sent with great joy and good news? Have I received him? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna look across this whole room in the next 
few seconds. I'm going to be looking, I'm going to start on your left, your left of the room. And if you're in this place and you would say, you know what? I really, I really want to, to know God. I want to know Jesus. I want to be saved. I want to receive Christ. I, I want the gift that God gave me in his son. I just want you, as my eyes move through here, I just want you to, to, to raise your hand up as I, my eyes are coming through. I'm coming through right now. I'm looking through. Yes. Anybody else? Anybody else? Good. Coming through this whole left side. Yes. Anybody else? Good. Awesome. Left side here. Yeah, good. Coming through this middle section right here. You just want to say yes to the Lord. These lights are bright, so make sure I see your hand. Yeah, good. Anyone else? Excellent. Coming through. Yes, sir, I see you. Way in the back. Good. Yes, sir, I see your hand too. It's awesome. All through the middle. Yep, good. Yeah, good. Anybody on this far, far right side? Yes, I see you. Yep, see you. Good. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir, I see you too. Awesome. Here's what I want you to do. Right where you're sitting, this is amazing about God. He, there's no magical pill for this. This is just, you heard a message that you've sinned and that he died for you and you wanna receive him. Right where you're sitting, I just want you to say this to the Lord. Say, Father, I've sinned against you and I believe that you sent Jesus to die for me. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Rescue me from darkness. Translate me into your kingdom. Write my name in the book of life. He knows exactly, exactly what you mean. Father, we thank you for how amazing you are. That Lord, you rescue us from something we couldn't rescue ourselves from. Lord, fill everybody with hope in this room. I pray that everyone leaves here today with hope, that everyone leaves here today comforted by your love and by your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. We're gonna light the candles. I know one year I forgot to light the candles, so they, they always, it's, no, it's true, I forgot to light the candles. <laughs> and so they're, they're putting stuff up. But I'm going to invite my wife and my son and his wife to the stage, and this is not lighting. Joy to the world. Yay. Hey, we got it. Yeah, praise the Lord. They're gonna come up here, and from our family to your family, Merry Christmas. And we, we want you to leave this place tonight with this thought in your mind about this light that you've been translated from a place where there was no light to now you live in the kingdom of light. And the amazing thing about light is it can't be overcome by darkness. It's impossible. The enemy can try, he can beat on you, but you have hope in him because God has rescued you. And so I'm gonna light their candle and then they're gonna come down. The staff's gonna come through and light your candle. I just wanna give you a little bit of instruction like we do every year because there's always trouble. Some women around you are wearing some pretty gnarly product right now. <laughs> and so if this flame gets to them, we're going to have a lighting service like we've never seen before. <laughs> so this is how we do it. I'm going to show you. You do not tip your candle to light their candle because that's called wax on the floor, wax on the chairs. And little kids, Jesus is watching you. So, <laughs> all right. And then they're going to light each other's candle. And then they're going to staff and whoever's involved. Why don't you guys come forward? And then they're going to come through and they're going to light your candle. I'm going to have you guys stand. Would you do that? Would you just stand? Man, it's tempting to want to lean that candle. Don't do it. Our maintenance guys will love you. good. As we sing this song, I want you now to sing this song with the context of, man, I have been delivered. It was a holy night that Jesus was born because without him, we would have no hope in the world, the Bible says. So we're going to sing this song and we're going to worship together. Bye. 
I want us to, as a group, I want us to sing that last little verse and we're gonna raise our candles because it's amazing to see what light does to a room that's dark. And I'm gonna have the light guys, you're gonna just turn the lights down and we're just gonna worship the Lord and declare this to the Father. Father, we thank you for being the light in our dark world. We thank you for sending your son. We thank you for the power in his name. We surrender this night, this week to you, Lord. Have your way in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone says amen. I'm not going to ask you to clap. That could be very risky right now. <laughs> Two quick things, just look around. I just love this. I don't want this part to end. I love the candles lit. But before we blow those out, I wanna share two things with you. One, we'd love for you to join us on Sunday. We're gonna be here in two days because Sunday is Sunday, right? <laughs> and if you brought an offering or a gift for the Lord this evening, we have boxes that you can drop those in on your way out. Now comes the risky part. I didn't even bring my candle up here because it's too risky. <laughs> so everybody carefully, remember hand behind it, Pretend it's your birthday, blow that candle out. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight.